It has been 40 years since Suzuki Motor Corporation Japan entered the Indian car market uh, as a joint venture partner of uh, Maruti. Uh, the dream back then was to uh, fulfill the aspirations of millions of Indians by providing them with an affordable and a reliable car. And truly, uh, like the alto tagline goes, Maruti Suzuki became India's Pehli Savari. And we have with us uh, Mr. Shivastava, who spent 30 years in the organization. That's a lifespan, light years in the corporate world. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shivastava, tell us, uh, how have you seen India change in these many years? And today, would you say we have moved from uh, aspiration by, uh, buying to utility-led buying, as far as car ownership is concerned? Yeah, surely I think uh, uh, India, Indian car consumer has changed. Uh, actually, India itself has changed dramatically. I remember um, uh, when I joined Maruti Suzuki 30 years back plus, um, the Indian car penetration uh, per thousand population was about two. Now it's about 30. But we're still very far behind some of the richer nations where it's upward of 650, six, even in fact, uh, US is 750 or so, Japan is uh, 700 plus. So we, are, we have still a lot of room to grow, but uh, certainly the, the, the entire way by which mo personal mobility, uh, which used to be 30 years back, has changed dramatically. So one is the volume itself. Volume, I remember, we were, when, when Maruti Suzuki entered the, the uh, market, it was, uh, uh, India used to have about 50,000 vehicle sale every year, 50,000. 25,000 used to be the sale of Premier Padmini and 25,000 approximately of Ambassador. Today, yeah, in fact, this year, 22, 23, the Indian, in the Indian industry, 39 lakh vehicles were sold, in passenger vehicles. So from 50,000, the journey has become 39,000, 39 lakhs. And in fact, India is now, by the way, the third largest PV market in the world. It used to be some 45th when Maruti came in. So I think uh, uh, from being that 45th to third now in the world, um, it's quite a change. Secondly, uh, or thirdly, actually the consumer buying itself has changed. One, the process itself. So today, people are more into the digitalization. Uh, you know, people uh, use uh, um, uh, internet to find out about the cars. Earlier, it used to be largely word of mouth. And whether it's uh, the choice of medium of consumers, it's like completely changed there also. Fourthly, in terms of the buying pattern, earlier about 80% of the people or 85% of the people were first time buyers. Uh, compare with the uh, US or Japan, where the first time buyers are only 5%. Now, of course, it's about 45, 47%. But first time buyers from 85% have now come to about 45%. Replacement buying and additional car buying. That is, you have a car and you buy another car in the family, that has increased. So, also has increased that you sell your old car and buy a new car. So, that is the other big thing. And uh, when you said uh, that uh, uh, the, the uh, reason for buying has changed. So earlier it used to be entirely about functionality, but now it is more about aspiration. That's because the social uh, milieu has changed in India and uh, people are now buying more for aspiration uh, rather than just utility. Another thing is uh, in April 22, uh, you launched the XL6 of 14.55 lakh. Then there was a grand Vitara that came in for a, with a price tag of 22.5 lakh. And now you're all set to launch your most expensive vehicle yet. Tell me, in the past many years, has the car maker's agenda changed from providing the most affordable car for India to moving uh, to a pre more premium based model? Uh, has the positioning overall changed for Maruti Suzuki? Yeah, I think we are just following the market. So the uh, per, per capita income 30 years back used to be 700 rupees, 650 rupees uh, uh, GDP per capita for India. Today it is like upwards of 3,000. And if you take PPP terms, the purchase parity terms, it's even higher. So obviously the choice of cars uh, is now a, a slightly more uh, 
premium. Uh, the reason for buying, as I said, uh, from pure functionality or fuel efficiency, it is changing towards more aspiration about design, about performance and so on. So obviously we follow that market. And uh, one major thing uh, in that respect is that while Maruti Suzuki, as you said, we have changed, our market share in the 10 lakh and below cars, which is our, currently our market share is 60% in that category. And earlier we never were present in the 10 to 15 lakh bracket. But with this advent of these cars you just mentioned, in the 10 to 15 lakh category also Maruti Suzuki has become the market leader. Although there our market share is not 60%, it's slightly less than 30%, but still the market leader. And that's quite surprising for many, many of the analysts, many of the industry pundits. They say Maruti Suzuki could not have ever been in the market leaders in the higher price category, which we have become. In fact, our premium channel Nexa was launched, essentially keeping in mind that we had to get away from that brand image of uh, being only a reliable value for money uh, sort of uh, car. Now, let me tell you, that part is also very important. Today, as they say, Bharat still has those values. They want fuel efficient cars, they want reliability, peace of mind, that we have for that, we have that original brand of ours. And then there is this other India, uh, different from Bharat in a little way of more aspirational. And we knew that this trend is going to become big as our economy grew. And that is why we became a slightly more, uh, we launched a premium channel, which was Nexa. It's not premium, it is what is called mass premium. So it's not luxury, it is mass luxury. And there we are happy that we could uh, be successful. And of course, you just, uh, uh, I think the news is only at two days old that Maruti Suzuki will be launching uh, a vehicle, uh, which is a high-end MPV, like uh, we are taking it from Toyota. Uh, it's, uh, uh, and we will be launching in a high price category, um, probably around that 30 lakh sort of bracket. And uh, we hope, and we are working towards creating that sort of premiumness in our Nexa channel for us to be able to sell this vehicle and we hope we'll become market leaders there as well. And next is luxury cars then? Um, <laughs> a, a difficult question because, you know, uh, we'll see how the... At the moment, luxury cars, by the way, in India, for audience here, uh, it's uh, just uh, uh, less than 1% of the market. It's about 0.9%. Uh, last year, about 37,000 luxury cars were sold. It's a really small market. Out of those 39 lakh passenger vehicles, about 37,000 were luxury cars. So it's still a very small and I think we do not have the, at the moment those uh, type of engines uh, and the volume certainly don't justify our moving into that type of segment. Moving to your digital journey, uh, you know Maruti Suzuki has launched not one but two Metaverse platforms. One is Nexaverse and Arenaverse. Um, how has that helped in furthering sales and reaching out to this uh, digital savvy consumer? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it's a great question because, you know, uh, 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 India, by the way, has uh, a, a very big geography. and we, we have car penetration now going into smaller areas as well. Uh, people also want to, even if they are in larger city, want to look at cars in their own free time in, uh, and they want to do it in an immersive experience manner. And that's what uh, the Metaverse provides. We have the Nexaverse, we have the Arenaverse now, and it also helps in expanding our footprint across the countries where we cannot have physical showrooms. So there are many places where you just have that Oculus and you can actually uh, trans you can be transformed into a, a, a you can be transported into a, a new showroom and where you can see all the cars you want in a 3D immersive. Uh, way and that's proved great. So it's not just a statement of technology, but it's also very customer friendly. In fact, the engagement there is uh, much higher, about 9% higher than the physical uh, showroom visits. So in that sense, it's, uh, it's, it's very good, the reach is very good. And by the way, there's an interesting uh, uh, experiment which we are all, which we, Maruti Suzuki is doing, which is that we have realized that while India has 650,000 villages, six and a half lakh villages, there are only 410,000 villages which have at least one Maruti. So there are about 2,40,000 villages which don't have a Maruti. 
people say uh, 4 lakh 10000 is great but we believe the uh, what is past is past we have to look at the balance 240000 where we may not have a physical infrastructure but we can always have this metaverse through metaverse that great experience and we are going and penetrating into those markets now in fact last year we added about uh, 20 23000 villages uh, to our, that tally of 410 where you could penetrate thanks to this uh, uh, new technology. Yeah, but there was a time when we thought, you know, digital car purchases are, uh, you know, you ha it's a touch and feel category, you have to go to the showroom. Pandemic kind of turned that theory on its head. But today, would you say, I mean, can you actually ascribe a percentage to how many sales have happened purely by the digital means? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we keep uh, monitoring it very closely. In fact, it's 27% of our sales purely from uh, the digital way. Uh, car b journey, by the way, from the time when you think of buying a car to when you actually buy a car, any of people here, uh, you will go through 26 touch points. That's the uh, research findings. So from the time you look at the internet uh, to see about the car, then you go and see, download the brochure, you look at the car, uh, you look at the company profile and so on, there are 26 touch points. And we have uh, digitalized 24 of them. The two points which have not been digitalized are test drive and actual delivery. Of course, that's difficult. That has to be, you know, we have an option where you can do a test drive virtually. It doesn't, it, it is not, it is not the same thing. So yes, you are right in a, in, in a car world, uh, people would like to smell the leather as they say, or kick the tires. So they want to f physically visit the showroom. And in fact, 93% of the buyers do that, 93%. But some people go through this entirely digitally and after they were for taking the delivery, obviously they go to the showroom and it's also a long term purchase in the sense that uh, you will keep uh, visiting for after sales, service and so on and so forth, taking uh, insurance again or uh, fitting some accessories. So yes, it's still a lot of uh, importance is attached to physical. And that's why we don't say it's digital, we say it is digital. And that's something which uh, is very, very, uh, uh, you know, especially applicable to, uh, to, to automobiles. You know, there's uh, something I've always noticed. Whenever we talk about brands that have existed for many, many decades, uh, the traditional or the legacy brands, as we may call it, Whenever they do uh, some, you know, there's a technological advance that they've pi pioneered. There's always an element of surprise, you know, oh, it's a digital, uh, traditional brand which has got into this digital sphere. Would you want to argue that? Would you, would you say that as a traditional brand, you are, I think, uh, you have the foundation and you have the ability to take that risk and do something which is out of the box, as opposed to the digital first brands? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, uh, there is great advantage in having a legacy, but there is also a disadvantage uh, in terms of in, in, in times of disruptions. And in fact, uh, there is a very famous uh, uh, book uh, uh, mid 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 nineties about disruption. It is uh, it is about traditional brands with large market shares, how they are averse to disruption, and the reason why they are averse to disruption is because they don't want it to happen. And why they don't want it to happen is because they are market leaders and they are good at what has already happened. That's why they are market leaders. So they are good at the current. They may or may not be good for the future. And therefore, it is very, uh, it's a matter of research and it's a conclusion drawn after many decades of research that in times of disruptions, uh, the, the traditional brands find it very difficult. It is true. And those brands which do not change according to those disruptions will be wiped out because disruptions will happen irrespective of whether you want it to or not. So while you are good at, uh, you are market leaders because you are good at doing things currently in the most efficient way, Therefore, it is in your interest that disruptions don't happen. But remember, disruptions will happen irrespective of whether you want it or not. And Maruti Suzuki, we realize that. And therefore, we have a program in our, uh, in our uh, organization called Mail Program. It's about innovation labs. It's Maruti Suzuki Automobile Innovation Labs. It's called Mail Program. Where our employees also can, you know, have, if they have an innovative idea, they can actually go out of their normal working uh, 
day and they can actually work on their other ideas and that's something which has brought us uh, very good results. In fact, many, many of the startups, uh, uh, this, this is also the program where we encourage startups and therefore we realize disruptions will happen, we realize that big companies don't want it, therefore we are very mindful of that and therefore we want to change very quickly so, and that is why you see Marty Suzuki even after so many years we have still been the market leaders by far. You've kept up. And you know, we are at a CTV conference and you gave a fantastic presentation there. Uh, Maruti Suzuki has been this giant advertiser on TV for decades. Um, now with ACR data available, you know, where you can do customized advertising on TV, considering the behaviors, the patterns and the data available on TV. Uh, is it going to be a game changer for Maruti? Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, uh, Yes, we, we, our, our advertising uh, budgets are like 1,200, 1,400 crores, which is pretty large. Um, we used to spend most of our advertising budgets on television. Today, the breakup is about 34, 35% is television, about 30% uh, is digital, and around uh, 25 or so is, uh, is print, and the balance is... Uh, on OH and radio and so on. So yes, uh, we have uh, to change and I believe uh, while television is still very important. Now, uh, I think Dr. Batra in his uh, opening uh, remark said personalized messaging. And we have at Maruti Suzuki build uh, what, we, what is called a SVOC, a single view of customer. We have sold in the last 40 years of our existence two and a half crore vehicles. And we have data about these two and a half crore consumers. Earlier it used to be data only on our DMS, which is a transactional data. So in, in cars, as you know, people will come and uh, uh, do their insurance, they will do financing. So we know all that because that's transaction. Then they come for surveys, etc. But now we have uh, interactional data as well. So, so, so if a consumer walks into the showroom, we will, uh, we will keep his data. He may or not, may not buy a vehicle from, from, from us, but we will keep that data on, in, in our database. So we have now stitched together transactional data with interactional data and on a single vehicle. And there are, uh, as, as you just mentioned, it can be very, very different. Uh, the scenario can be very different. In fact, I'll give you an example. There was one consumer who bought a Wagon R in 2005. And uh, we had in our database, and uh, our database tool, because we run analytics on this database, and now we have, of course, MI, uh, ML, AI, and so on and so forth. So uh, this data threw up a very interesting thing that the daughter of this guy would be passing out from college. She was in Gargi College in, uh, in, in uh, Delhi, and that she might be buying a car. So, sure enough, our people approached her and she said, no, no, my dad bought the Wagon R and I'm not going to buy another Wagon R. He said, no, the Wagon R has changed. It's the third generation now. And she was buying a, another car from one of our competitors. I wouldn't name. But uh, when we approached her, she said, I'm not going to buy a Wagon R. When we showed the Wagon R, she took a test drive. She bought the Wagon R. Now, that wouldn't have been possible. Yeah. And we have a connected, uh, we are talking of connected TVs, we have connected cars now. So uh, we have now the, we can know how many times a consumer is putting the brakes on, how many times he is over, uh, he's over speeding, or uh, e e e even where he or she is going. But don't be afraid because we are governed by, by, by data privacy and we can't really, but you know, Sometimes we approach the customers and say, you must change your brakes now. So he says, I have done only 10,000 kilometers. Your manual says it has to be changed in 20,000 kilometers. So we say that's, if you are applying brakes in during a day five times, but, if you, but we find that you are applying 31.2 times on an average. And therefore, your brakes are likely to, uh, to, 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 to uh, you know, uh, become bad uh, earlier. And sure enough, then when they check, they will find that. It's all uh, through this connected desert. So you can have uh, absolutely different scenario 
and you could even tell fuel for example if your fuel is down you are happily driving if they, they, you can get an online message saying that uh, saying that your fuel is short and there is no station if you are driving somewhere in the mountains for example there's no fuel station uh, for the next 30 kilometers you will have a fuel station in another let's say 100 meters better do it now and not only i mean it, 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 there, there is no end to it and i can give you some really not horrible but really great uh, great examples for example we are doing a testing of retina movement uh, so if you are driving and you are like uh, a little uh, drowsy or if you are uh, uh, if you are looking around i mean your attention is less then we can tell that please be careful uh, your attention has to be so there are so many things which we can you know uh, my daughter when she takes the car my car so she will say generally main nehru place ja rahi to meet a friend then i find ki wo to gurgaon ja rahi so i tell her ki bhai kahan ja rahi ho so um, so she says dad aapka data privacy ka wo hai main mukadma karungi so i say ki wo to theek hai gaadi to meri hai main chori ka mukadma karunga tumhare pe but you know jokes apart it is it's something which you can put to great use and i think that we are taking those actions and going forward it will be really really different but to what extent how much would you be dedicating to ctv advertising now at this point is there a number you've decided no no we haven't decided to a number but ctv advertising as we said uh, uh, we, currently we are, we are we are just looking for a uplift in our overall reach 2 to 3% or so but uh, uh, it's getting very big and i have a feeling that going forward it will become mainstream and people will say uh you know because ctv has great advantages both of linear uh, combined with linear it has got great especially for auto brands uh, where we have imagery and stickiness of image very important uh are you moving on to something very important for you i i think at this point uh, you know you've recently lost market share in, uh, in the car market you know where suvs have become very very important uh, i think nearly half of all car sales today roughly yeah about 43% yeah. So what is the strategy to boost sales in that particular department does uh, Brezza Grand Vitara take more become more important for you as a brand Yeah surely for, uh, for, for I think everybody here realizes that the uh, SUV market has become much larger than anticipated uh, it's now 43% of the market combined with MPVs which is about 8 9% so half the market is what is known as MUV market SUV plus MPVs Uh, small cars have come down to about 35% still very large 1.3 million last year but s- s- less than the suvs and you know maruti suzuki market share and i would like to uh, you know dispel some 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 uh, 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 you know wrong notion uh, people believe that maruti suzuki lost market share last 20 years uh, it's not so uh, if you look at data for the last 23 years maruti suzuki's market share has always fluctuated between 43 to 51% we have market share above 50% in 4 years mm-hmm. in the last 23 years and those 4 years have been 2018 2019 2020 and 2021 so 50% plus market share has happened recently and therefore despite the fact that so many competitors have come in you are referring to market share loss of last two years and last two years what has happened is while our market share in non suvs has gone up now to 65% mm-hmm. from 58% to 65% but our suv market share has been low and the reason has been that while this market has about 46 brands maruti suzuki has only one brand which is the brezza we introduced the vitara last year uh, september now we have introduced two more models frongs and the jimny and we hope that we'll reach about uh, 25% share this year with uh, in the suv combined with a 65% market share in a non suv i think uh, we should look at market share above 45% and our long term target is 50% market share again for that we need to reach 33% market share in suvs that's going to take some time but we are working towards that fantastic i think this has been a great year for you even otherwise uh, you've reported a rebound in your net profit for fy 2022 
uh, 23 after, you know, consecutive years of decline. Another thing uh, was, uh, I think you've entered the global 30 car maker uh, list by uh, revenue. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you're right. Actually, this is the first time any car uh, man manufacturer in India, in fact, any engineering manufacturing company in India to cross 1 lakh crore turnover. That's happened for Maruti Suzuki uh, uh, this year. And that I think as now, that is the reason why it is propelled uh, in the top 20, 30 companies in the world as you uh, just mentioned. Profits have been good but I believe profits are a function in Maruti Suzuki and for other auto OEMs, mainly a function of material cost and material cost uh, uh, means commodity prices more or less. So that fluctuation uh, is what led to the uh, lower, lower profits in the two, three years earlier. But now it is again back on the thing. So we made about profit before tax of almost like 10, 11,000 crores. So hopefully it should get better from here, especially if the commodity prices come down. And just, just my very last question related to this, because you mentioned you're obviously going to increase that market share. Uh, how soon are we going to see that 50% and above? What is your target? You said, is there a, are there a couple of months, years? No, it, 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 it's going to be uh, uh, medium term. Can't be next year, as I said, next year most likely, uh, if everything works well, supplies are okay, uh, around 45-46%, that's what I expect. Going forward, of course, so, it won't be in the close to the market, 50% of the market will be in the close Inshallah, thank you so much, it was absolute delight talking to you. Thank, thank you for you that insight. Thank you very much, thank you.